Welcome to Loop TV. I'm Gene, along with Andrew and Doug. Breaking topic, courtesy of Mark German from Bloomberg, regarding the timing of Apple's mixed reality headset, uh, based on Mark's reporting, which is right about 80 to 90 percent of the time, that the uh, that headset is going to be delayed a few months. It will miss WWDC 2022. And uh, as a, another uh, starting point is that as uh, one of my predictions was that we would see the mixed reality headset uh, preview, not actually shipping, but previewed in 2022 at the developer conference. So it sounds like that's getting moved back. The reasons is, is the product's just simply not done. Uh, they, he had mentioned a heating issue. So uh, it's a complicated product. Mixed reality as a reminder. It is something where your eyes are not on the real world, but it uses outside cameras and brings the real world into almost like a VR type experience. It is a stepping stone between uh, VR and uh, AR, and ultimately the end game is for AR here. So that was the news. I'm gonna kick it over to Andrew and give your initial reaction to it. My initial reaction was makes sense, right? This is a complex product with complex development cycle, supply chain, um, component technology. Um, from what we can tell, uh, data points we've gotten out of Cupertino, it seems like it's already been delayed by about a year. So a month or a few month long delay like um, Mark is reporting, um, doesn't make as much sense to me as a full year long delay. I think uh, the idea of the Apple mixed reality headset being delayed again from 2022 to WWDC 2023 makes most sense to me. Okay, so you're saying uh, that probably gets kicked all the way to a full year out here. I think so. Yeah, because the WWDC launch time frame makes so much sense for Apple and for the developer community to get behind this product and make it uh, ready from a software perspective and apps and features when it launches a few months after WWDC before the holidays. For sure. You want to get uh, developers on board. It would be the logical time. That's why I thought this would uh, happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing that is uh, wonderful about Loop is uh, we do debate things and one of the three of us who hasn't spoken yet uh, made a prediction when we did our holiday prediction that uh, the the that this headset would be delayed. That's Doug Clinton. Doug, uh, as we would say uh, back in our our analyst days, kudos on a good call there. Uh, take a victory lap here. Uh, that uh, that sounds like this is getting pushed back. What were your thoughts when you saw it? beyond the the uh, uh, the, the, beyond the victory satisfaction lap. of of getting yeah. it right? Uh, I would say from an investment standpoint, my reaction was it doesn't really matter. And I think one thing that is always worth remembering for investors, particularly in these you know, obviously high quality, great companies like an Apple, is so many of the things that happen in the news cycle related to these companies really doesn't matter from an investment standpoint. Whether the headset hits you know, tomorrow, this year, next year, the year after, we know it's coming. We also know that it's going to take a long time for it to ramp and be meaningful relative to the current product base. So if you think about Apple as an investment, it's still all about you know services. It's all about the iPhone. It'll take a very long time before anything related to this headset really matters from a financial standpoint. And my view is I would agree with that. It doesn't change the arc of where Apple's going. They're going to want to participate in this. Uh, they want a piece of the metaverse. They may not want to refer to it as the metaverse. Andrew's got a thought on that, but they want to be there. They're going to get it. They're going to get it figured out. Apple has had product delays. It's uh, They're not as frequent as, uh, for say, Tesla, but they do happen. There are some classic ones around the color of a, a white iPhone being delayed because they didn't have the, the pigmentation correct, all the way up to more recently, AirTags being delayed. It does happen. Uh, it's not surprising, and I don't think it changes the trajectory of Apple's opportunity in the metaverse, but it does uh, create a headwind in terms of multiple expansion opportunity. And this is something that I had talked about for Apple and Facebook kind of dueling it out as the, the, the top performing fangs in 2022. And if there is this uh, pushback uh, of the MR headset, it does uh, going to create some uh, Investors are going to have to be more patient, I think, to get the, a view of it, to really get excited about seeing the product. And I think that, uh, well, I agree, it has uh, almost no impact 
on the long-term terminal value of Apple. I still believe this should be a $250 plus stock. Uh, I do think that it does create some headwinds, at least in 2022, in related to uh, getting that multiple expansion that I had predicted. It looks like I'm going to be, I'm at least trending to being wrong on that one. I'm going to go back to Andrew. I briefly mentioned uh, the metaverse and Apple. You've picked up on some fun things about how Apple talks internally about the metaverse. Well, what I've heard is that uh, the term metaverse is kind of a no-no. Uh, again, from Mark, Mark's reporting. Um, term metaverse is a no-no at Apple's headquarters in Cupertino in the sense that I think the spirit of what they want to unlock for their users is not a Facebook-like vision of um, an enclosed, uh, all-day-long metaverse immersive experience, but rather Apple, I think, will leverage their device ecosystem where uh, the headset fits into a, a full ecosystem and a range of products that let us compute persistently for different use cases using different devices. And, and the software ties it all together. So, so the I think reason why they don't like the metaverse... Industry. The reason why they don't like the language is because they have a different view of it, uh, correct? It's not because uh, Facebook has uh, run to the hill and claimed that language and they don't want to help a competitor. I think it's fundamentally a different vision of what the future looks like. It's more persistent computing across a range of devices than a single device that we use all day long. I think probably for simplicity purposes, uh, most people still revert to, refer to it as Apple's metaverse opportunity. Would you agree with that? Sure. Yeah. Love it. Uh, Doug, since you uh, nailed this one, I'm going to give you a final word. I think the last word is, and this is, I think, a bigger topic that we should eventually go much deeper into, but it, it really relates to what Andrew said and, and Apple's vision of what the metaverse is. And, you know, I think it's, it's interesting because when you think about VR, a lot of people think about immersion as kind of the key uh, component of what makes the metaverse the metaverse. Now, I haven't really believed in that vision, but that is a big cohort of people. And Apple, I think we all agree, is really the best in the world at designing their products with intention for how they are to be used. If they're designing their device with intention that people don't spend 12 hours straight in it, you know, I think that that begs the question of, is this sort of immersive version of the metaverse the right way to think about the future? And what could happen is we could have kind of two very distinct competing camps where you have Facebook as the kind of immersion camp and Apple may be tied a little bit more to the real world. But I think that's kind of the lingering question as it relates to this product. A market down, that will be a topic for a future episode of Loop TV. And special thanks to uh, Mark German for moving us in uh, the right direction. On behalf of Andrew, Doug, and myself, along with Loop TV, bye for now.